Hello there, it is Jo from Minerva and today I am opening a can of worms because I'm asking what do you do with your scrap fabric? It can be quite a contentious issue if you're starting to uh, build up lots of scrap fabrics and it, you know, fabrics are a precious thing, they use the world's resources and we buy them and we want to try and use them up the best that we can. It depends what you think scraps are. Some people will describe a tiny, tiny little piece of fabric as a scrap and some people will think that um, larger pieces are scraps. So I can't answer all your questions today and I certainly can't give you all the ideas for how to use up your scrap fabrics, but I'd like to give you my top 10. Before I start the top 10, I am wearing the Page Hoodie by Chalk and Notch and this is made using lots of scraps of jersey and uh, sweatshirt fabrics. So this is just a cotton jersey and inside's a cotton jersey so I get the same thickness as a sweatshirt. I've got um, a blue back, green sleeves, navy front, some of the navy for the band, some little bits of cuffing. I didn't have enough cuffing to do both. But as one hoodie, it's a really harmonious top. Essentially, I could have brought the whole of my wardrobe into my workspace to show you lots of different things, but I've tried to pick out some particular uh, skills that you can use to use up your scrap fabrics. Number one is to use your fabrics as a lining. Larger scraps can be used as pocket linings, waistband linings, facings, all of those things that are on the insides of your garment and they won't be seen and if you can do accurate sewing then you can put those pieces on the inside and they won't show on the outside. These are my Dawn jeans, it's the button fly version, you might have seen that on some of the sew alongs and inside I had my uh, last piece of po cotton poplin from Art Gallery and I had a shirt made in this so I've used it to make the pocket linings and also to line the waistband. So instead of cutting two waistbands in denim I cut one in the poplin and it makes the waistband much softer on the inside and also it really helps with the top stitching sewing because I haven't got so many thick layers to go through. So pocket linings and waistband linings are a great, work, great way to use up some of your scraps. I also had a very near miss on making the Billy sweatshirt dress because the pocket pieces were quite big pieces and I didn't account for that when I um, ordered my fabric. So I have a, a Billy sweatshirt here and the pocket linings are a piece of plain sweatshirt fabric and you can just see it peeking out because on the Billy there's the uh, pocket shape is curved but if you pick something that contrasts with your pattern fabric it works just fine. Number two is to use your fabrics uh, for facings. So this is some of the new Minerva exclusive linen blend fabric. It's absolutely beautiful. Really soft fabric with a, a linen texture. I only had one metre sent to me as a sample, but I really wanted to have a go at making something in it to see the drape. So I made my facings in a leftover piece of cotton chambray and you really, really can't see them from the right side. But it's meant that from one metre of fabric, I was able to make this shell top. This is the pattern here. It's a really great pattern for not using up very much fabric. So it's quite good to have in your arsenal of sewing kit, not just more and more and more and more fabric, but some patterns that enable you to use the final pieces or the last little pieces of your fabric. This pattern is one, good one to choose. This is a shell top. If you've got enough for sleeves, you could go for sleeves or you can just get the, the front and the back out of your fashion fabric and then make your linings in something else. Another pattern you can do this with is the Ogden Cami. It uses very little fabric if you make your facings in a, a different fabric. I also know that this pattern for the skirt, it uses hardly any fabric at all. It's just a front piece and a back piece with a side zip. It doesn't have a waistband on it, so it just has a binding on the inside. And that uses, for my size, very little fabric. So those patterns for me are ones that I keep just in a particular place in my row of sewing patterns for when I've got a really small piece left over. If you've got a pattern that uses a very small amount of fabric for a successful garment, then we would love to hear about it, so you can leave it in the comments below. Number three is to make small things with your smaller pieces of scrap. So I've got uh, scrunchies that I sometimes make that match my outfit, 
or um, I've got longer hair so I can have a fabric headband. You can also try infinity scarves, bandanas, all of those things that use up the very last square of your fabric. It's a good idea if you can um, when you've finished your garment to make something that goes with it straight away afterwards because then you don't store the scraps at all. It's good to keep your fabric moving because then there's always the next thing to look out for. You might have some sizeable chunks left over, um, not enough to make a complete outer garment, but you might have a fabric that you really like the pattern of and you don't want to um, not ever use that piece again or look at it again. And so that's where you can use your larger pieces for actually lining the insides of things that you might see. My Eden coat, uh, Tilly and the Buttons Eden coat, needed lining and because I'd spent quite a bit of money on all the findings and the hardware and the metal and the zips and everything I just used a piece of Ponte Roma that I had left over but I knew that I only had enough to cut the front linings the back and inside the hood in fact I didn't even have enough to cut the sleeves but that's good because really sleeves need to be a slippy fabric so you can get your arm in and out but I used up that whole piece of Ponte Roma which I couldn't make a sweatshirt out of I couldn't make a hoodie out of but all of that fabric has now been used. You need to make sure that if you're using a different fabric as your lining that you've got it in the places where it, it won't affect the wear of your garment so just like I said there sleeves you need to make sure that they're slippy. You can also use a different fabric on the back of a yoke on the inside of a shirt. Number five is this whole sort of pattern hacking idea. So the idea of having your original pattern but using different fabrics to make each component of the final garment. And I do this quite a lot. I mean, it's not for everybody. If it's not your style of what you like to wear, then you won't be able to do this quite so much. But I think it can be really successful. If you want to see how people have been using up fabrics, um, you can go on our website and use the hashtag, uh, hashtag stash busting and you'll see lots of people using fabrics in really ingenious ways. Here's just a few of mine. I like the Grainline Studio Scout Tee and sometimes I don't always have enough to cut all of the pieces out. So this is an embroidered version. So I had a little piece of this embroidered fabric left over the green from a Carnaby dress that I made and then I had some of this um, embroidered fabric and even though they're not the same colour they're really harmonious as two fabrics that work together. So the Scout Tee is a good one for hacking. You might see me wearing this on some of my tutorial videos. It's a really easy to wear lightweight summer sweatshirt and the reason I'm showing this one is because this has two different fabrics. So I've mixed the fabrics. So on the back is the uh, stretch jersey and on the front is one final piece of um, visco chalet that I had left over and I only had enough just to on the fold cut the front piece and it makes a really great great sweatshirt because it's still stretchy enough through the back and the shoulders and the arms because it's a raglan for that to go over my head. The raglan means that I've got all of that stretch there too and then I just have a silky front. I love this sweatshirt, I wear it loads and loads and loads. This next one is um, a very Joe um, is what my friends say when I wear it. Wow Joe, that's a real Joe skirt. This is a skirt made with lots of different fabrics and I collected these fabrics over time because somebody gave me that piece of vintage fabric there and it wasn't big enough really to do anything but I made a panelled skirt and I used it on the ruffles of the pockets. I used the rest of that art gallery fabric that I showed you on the inside of my Dawn jeans and each panel then only required a small amount of fabric so you might have a pattern that you have in mind which is broken into sections. Patterns like this uh, are really popular now where they're encouraging you to cut different pieces to be more sustainable in your sewing. Number six is to think about your jersey scraps. So they're sometimes slightly more tricky to use up because you need to go with the direction of greatest stretch. So you need the stretching to be in the, the correct plane to the part of your body. So be careful if you're using up scraps for a sleeve, for example, that you have the um, either the crosswise give of a woven fabric going across your arm and across your body. And if you're using stretch fabric that you've got the correct stretch going down and across. I once made a pyjama top and I 
just wanted to use up the fabric and I cut the sleeve the wrong way around and it was so tight around my sleeve but I could stretch the arm right off the end of my hand. So if you're using jersey scraps you need to make sure that you're observing the direction of greatest stretch. My biggest recommendation to you if you have lots of jersey stretch fabrics is to learn to make knickers. It's really easy to do, it uses up lots of small amounts of fabric and it's a really really satisfying project. You can use up quite small amounts you can mix and match them, so sometimes my um, knickers have a different colour on the back to on the front. I can use a really small piece for the gusset inside. I can add little embellishments and really make them my own. If you can learn to make knickers, you'll never have jersey scraps ever again. Number seven is to think of some small projects that you can use your scraps for. Often um, they're quite good for gifting. So there's an endless amount of things that you can make with scrap fabrics. Um, I've got quite a few ways that I use sort of regularly at home, which is um, little makeup bags or bags to keep small items in. Um, this is my daughter's and she's got some sewing stuff in here. And she's made that with um, a little nine patch where she was learning to sew. So she's used up some really nice fabrics, especially if you've got something like a little bit of Liberty, you can use that up. You can use, you've got lunch bags, pump bags, um, the linings on handbags, project bags. This has got crochet in, I think, a load of crochet squares. So this keeps all of a project together. So those are good makeup bags, uh, shopping bags. Um, this drawstring bag can be used as a reusable gift bag or some people uh, make their own heat pad. So this is a heat pad with uh, the little beans inside and it uses up a small piece on the back and loads and loads of little pieces on the front. You do have to be careful with scraps that you're not making another huge project that you won't get around to. So that's why I like to use my scraps while I'm garment making because then I'm using big pieces up at the same time um, as I'm sort of creating them. If you're just using a tiny little piece to make a scrunchie, you'll never ever get to the end of your pile of scraps. If you enjoy making homeware but you haven't quite got enough fabric left over from uh, your curtains or another project. You can just use little pieces to use for applique. So this is um, my curtain fabric, but I didn't have enough to do a whole cushion cover, but I used the free form embroidery on my machine to make applique design. Uh, this one is a, a crazy quilt one. I love patchworking without any measuring. So this is just lots of strips sewn together I didn't have enough to do the back as well. But if you can use up some of your strips in a really creative way, then you'll soon get down them. Recently, I've really got down a, a, a big plastic box of scraps by making bunting, a piece of community bunting for our village hall. And um, me and my daughters and some friends from the village, we cut lots and lots and lots of triangles out in a group. And actually that was great because I saw my scraps just going down really, really quickly with everybody working together. Depending on what you call a scrap, some people keep a scrap bag on the go with really, really small pieces in and they use it as a stuffing. And it's a stuffing for some projects, but not for others. So it's a really great stuffing for a poof or a footstool or a draft excluder or a doorstop or something that you're not putting your body against or you need for comfort because it creates a really firm stuffing, slightly lumpy, but you can really, really pack quite a lot of your scraps into a home decor item as a stuffing. Talking of home decor, number nine is to have a go at using your scraps to decorate something. Now, this is the sort of uh, starter to the main course of making a quilt, but really you don't want to set your sights on making a quilt if you've never made one before. It becomes such an onerous project that, that then that's in another bag and then that becomes another um, pile of scrap things in a bag. So it's a good idea to try something small. So this is a white pillowcase and I've put lots of rectangles together, no measuring, no sort of arduous matching up, I just put lots and lots of strips together and sewed them up and then squared the, up the edges and sewed them to the edge of my pillowcase. Looks really great if you've got a plain uh, duvet set or a white duvet set. 
And if you like that, then you know you might want to move on to a quilt. But if this little bit takes you ages and ages, then really I would steer clear of making a quilt. Continuing with number nine, which is the sort of uh, the taster of quilting, I once thought that I was going to make a whole hexagon heirloom quilt and that's how far I got and then I just didn't want to do any more so I turned it into a pincushion but um, you know do something small to see if you like it first before you cut out lots and lots and lots of your scraps into a particular project and then realise that it's never going to get finished anyway so this one is a little pincushion that I made um, out of hexagons I had a go at paper piecing it was too accurate for me I just wanted to sew really quickly under the machine Number 10 is the aspirational quilt. Um, it's not for everybody. It's a long term project. Uh, it depends what scraps you're dealing with. Are you dealing with larger pieces that can be used in a garment or are you keeping really small pieces because they're precious amounts of fabric or a particular design or they're a memory fabric. Um, so if you do want to go down the quilt road, there are a few little things that I might uh, share with you which is try to choose something that's a quick sew so if you've got a sewing machine and uh, you just want to use up the scraps then go for something that's a quick sew like a strip quilt so you've probably seen this hanging sometimes in my tutorials and you, you probably wouldn't have noticed but there keeps getting another strip added every now and again and it's been there about a year actually maybe even two years and I just keep adding another strip to it that particularly uses up my strips. I have this one here which I've just finished and this is a crumb quilt and this one uses tiny squares, 10 centimetre squares and I didn't do these in strips, I made them in blocks of eight by eight. So if I wanted to make one block, I could make a block and I put it away and then when I next got some little squares, I made another block eight by eight and then eventually when I sewed them all together, I got a complete crumb quilt. It took a long time. All of these things take a long time. But if you if you have the mindset that you want to use up your scraps over time or that you eventually want to keep using them and not just gaining more and more and buying more and more curver boxes, then a quilt that has a um, free and easy, no measure sew element to it really does speed up the process. How you store scraps is a real interest to me. I would love to hear how you store all your scraps so you can list that below if you would like to share, that would be great. Um, I'll just show you how I store some of my scraps and when I say scraps I mean pieces that are below a metre square I would say. So I've got some boxes that I can see through which I think really helps. If you can see your scraps it sort of puts it in mind that you're going to use them up. So these two have a label on the front saying Patchwork Patchwork. I don't always use them for patchwork but I'd definitely go in there and see if I'd got a piece to make a couple of pocket linings or um, a waistband piece. I sometimes use these cardboard boxes although you can't see in them um, they fit in the cupboard that they uh, are stored in and I sort them as I'm going along. If you just chuck everything in a pile sometimes it can become really really overwhelming and it can weigh on your mind a little bit but if you sort them as you go along then you can sort of keep a handle on what you have got and what you're storing. So this box is all scraps that are solid fabric. So there's nothing patterned in here. Everything in here is a solid uh, fabric. So I might use this for facings like I did on the vest top. But really, because that's full, I'm thinking I might do a quilt with some solid colors in because that's full. This box is a box for just strips. So this is how I've been building up um, this quilt behind. When I get a thin piece off the end of my fabric off cut, so sometimes if you're cutting trousers or you're cutting something, you'll get a very thin strip. And I cut them up and I chuck them in this box. So I know in here there are only strips of fabric. This is the one that I'm working on at the moment. And I work in really small um, pieces. So I would uh, just keep adding to that one keep trimming the end off and when it's as long as the quilt I'll add it on. I've got them stuck together so all these strips are about the same length, all of these strips are about the same length and that one when I've put this last strip on I think I'll probably have used up most of that box. You might be uh, 
sorting for something in particular or something for in the future or you know you're going to keep adding to it and this is a special box because this is my one with just Liberty bits in so every time I get a piece of Liberty fabric left over then I'm storing those in this box separate to the others because I would like to make uh, maybe a cushion cover or a baby quilt or um, a tamarack jacket, you know, or a hovia jacket where I want to have the lining inside all Liberty pieces. So if you sort your fabrics as you go along, then you'll always know what you have and then you can refer and use them up. It's not for everyone, but I guess at some point you might have to uh, decide for yourself that some of your fabric you just need to let go of. So maybe you need to pass it on to somebody else who's learning to sew, um, take it to a group where people can use it, uh, pass it on to a charity shop. If you're hoarding fabric just because you bought it or you think you should keep it, then it's a really difficult thing um, to get your head around that you might not use it or it might have been a mistake. So I don't want to open a can of worms because it's different for different people but I like to keep my fabric moving um, I, I feel quite tense if I have fabrics that have been hanging around a long time so sometimes I just have a clear out and I pass them on to somebody else I guess this video could go on for ages and ages we could talk about all of the things that you can make with a small piece of fabric but I hope I've given you a flavour of some of the ways that you can be using yours up as you go along rather than creating a whole new project we would love to hear what you do with your scraps. Um, if you make anything uh, hacked with a pattern of different fabrics, we'd like to see that. You can use the hashtag stash busting and do head over to Minerva, make a free account and share your make so that you can inspire other people to use up their fabrics. Do call again soon. We've got lots of different videos. We have sew alongs, um, chit chat ones, educational ones, fabric pairings, and also little in-depth looks into pa new pattern releases and new pattern fabric designs. Mm -hmm.